The process of making an English horn reed is similar to making an oboe reed, but obviously there are differences of dimensions and specific issues for English horn reeds. In this episode, we will go through the process of tying, scraping, and putting on the wire. We assume that you have already watched enough of our oboe reed making videos, or you already know enough about oboe reed making to apply that knowledge to learning English horn reed making. The whole process should take a few days longer than making an oboe reed. Since the cane is thicker, scrape the reed over a period of several days so that it has more time to adjust gradually to the changes that are being made. If you're not sure what kind of cane or what shape of cane to get, start with a popular shape like Rigatti minus one shaped cane. If you are ordering cane and you have a choice of diameter, order 12.0 to 12.5. We use silver English horn staples that are 27 millimeters long. Here you see two types of English horn staples, one with a collar and one without. The staples you choose should fit snugly on your bocal and on your mandrel. The extra weight of the collar helps the reed stay on the bocal. Some reed makers prefer the staple with the collar. Some reed makers prefer no collar. When there is no collar, you can add a piece of surgical tubing to help your reed stay on the bocal. We'll show you this later. The other items you'll need that are specifically for English horn are an English horn mandrel, 28 gauge wire, a small pliers with a wire cutter in it, English horn staples, and surgical tubing that fits your staples. Soak the cane for 40 to 50 minutes. If you don't own an English horn mandrel, you can fashion a makeshift one by taking the cork off of an oboe staple and putting that onto your oboe mandrel, then putting the English horn staple on that. The length at which you wrap your reed is dependent upon the shape of your cane and the size of your staple. Most reed makers wrap at approximately 59 to 60 millimeters, measuring from the bottom of the staple to the end of the cane. And of course, an important consideration is that the cane needs to seal all the way up the sides. At the area where the cane meets the staple, you don't want there to be too much cane. You want it to seal with the least amount of cane possible. Slip the blade slightly and begin wrapping just like you do with an oboe reed. After winding down about a fourth of the way to the bottom of the staple, check to make sure your reed is sealed and straight. Then, to tie off the string, since there is no cork to help hold the knots in place, I like to wax the string a little extra and then make four or five knots. Here's what the reed should look like after it is wrapped. You can see how the blades are slightly slipped. Before you let the blank dry, make five or six scrapes on the corner of each blade. This will help the reed stay sealed and maintain its curve as it dries. Let it dry for at least a day before you start the basic scrape. After your blank has dried for a day, soak it for about 10 minutes. Put it on the mandrel and mark the bottom of the V line, which will be around 52 to 53 millimeters. Your finished reed will be about 56 to 57 millimeters long. The V-line to the end of the tip should be sloped, gradually getting thinner to the end of the tip. The tip should be shaded in front of the V-line. Scrape this much the same way you would with an oboe reed on both blades. Thin the tip enough to clip it open. Keep in mind that the tip of an English horn reed should not be as thin as that of an oboe reed. After clipping the reed, check it to make sure it still seals well. Now you are ready to scrape the heart, which will be the thickest part of your reed. Scrape on either side of the spine using small strokes. Each stroke should follow through across the V-line. As you scrape the heart, you will see two U-shapes emerge on either side of the spine. Keep working your way back with small strokes. The total length of the heart will be about 5 to 6 millimeters. Gradually work your way back to about 46 or 47 millimeters, about 5 or 6 millimeters behind the V-line. For the back of the reed, make a pencil mark at the 46 to 47 millimeter mark on each side of the spine. Ever so slightly, score the pencil marks with your knife. This is the defining line between the heart and the back of the reed. Start scraping just below the 46 to 47 millimeter mark and scrape up to your score mark. 
Each scrape you make should start a little further back on the window, scraping up to the mark. As you are scraping the windows, be sure to leave a spine and rails. Your scraping motions should be on either side of the spine. Work your way back to just a few millimeters in front of the string. Once you've got the tip, back, and heart well delineated, take a look at your reed with the reed backlet. This will allow you to see the reed in a different way to determine if there are any inconsistencies in your scrape. The goal of the basic rough scrape is to get the reed to make a noise that is close to a C sharp and to vibrate freely. Work on the balance of the reed until you've achieved this. Nothing needs to be greatly refined at this point. Once the reed crow is close to C sharp and seems to have the right amount of resistance, get the reed wet one more time, gently squeeze the reed open, and let it dry at least 24 hours. Then it will be ready for the second scrape. The next day, go through the second scrape and let the reed rest again. On the third day, check the balance again and work as needed to get the reed well balanced and vibrant. On the fourth day, if the reed is feeling settled, you can put the wire on. Most English horn reed makers use a wire, although some reed makers believe that the wire inhibits vibrations. Since English horn reeds are wider, they have a tendency to close. The purpose of the wire is to maintain the opening, not to open the reed any further. Use wire that is 26 to 28 gauge. Cut a piece of wire approximately 10 centimeters long. About two to three millimeters above the thread, place one blade of the reed directly onto the center of the wire. Wrap each side of the wire around the reed one full time and then cross the wires. Then twist the two ends of the wire together three or four times and clip the excess with your wire cutter. Now, slightly tuck the wire downward so it doesn't cut your lip when you're playing. Wrap the wire around the reed just tightly enough so the wire is secure and doesn't slip around. Good point, Suzanne. When wrapping the wire, just be sure the wire is coming into contact with all parts of the reed but is not too tight. Here's what the wire should look like once it's in place. As the reed dries, the cane will shrink slightly and the wire may come loose. When you soak the reed next time, if the wire is not secure, gently reposition it. If you have used a staple without a collar, you'll probably want to put a short piece of surgical tubing over the end of the staple to help it stay on the bocal. Your finished reed should crow between a C and a C sharp, be about 56 to 57 millimeters long, and should vibrate freely. Now that's something to crow about.